we are two days back from Motor City Nightmares in Michigan. It was a crazy busy show. It's a smaller show, but they had it jam-packed. Some of the aisles were too small for two people to walk going either direction, going opposite directions. Um, so maybe next year, widen it up a little bit. Um, but great show. We had a real good time. We didn't do a walkthrough just because of because of the amount of the crowd. I just didn't want to fuck with it. Sorry, guys. But we will show you our pickups. These are some of the cool things that we bought. And there were some cool-ass people we met there. Let's start off with Lycan and that item there. Well, before I get into that, this is one of the most, or typically, I've, we've been to two Motor Cities. Motor City Legacy and Motor City Nightmares. And they are extremely organized. The only reason why this one was a little bit, was extremely crazy I got two words for you. Bruce, no, three words for you. Bruce fucking Campbell. Okay? <laughs> okay. <coughs> now, on to the good stuff. <clears throat> I don't even know what's in this bag. Yeah, Bruce Campbell brought in a big <laughs> ass crowd. <laughs> so, for those that are true fans of our show, you I have didn't seen. Know you bought one of those. You have seen one of the. I, I, this is my second purchase from these guys. They were in the first room. That uh, as you're going in, you're passing one of the smaller vendor rooms to go get your ticket. And I was just, you know, looking around, getting excited because he dropped me off. Because we get there and it's jam-packed, no parking. So he drops me off at the door. And so I get my ticket and I go zoom right back to the little, the little room. And so this Instead is... Instead of going to find a location that I requested for her to wait for me... He saw what pulled me and understood that, oh, okay, that's what, that's what attracted her. And we'll get to that whenever we, that purchase comes up. But this is purchase number two from these people. And he's new. They didn't have him last time or the, he would have came home with me last time. But from Sinister. Sinistar. The goal. So he will go along with Billy. From Jigsaw. And she's like, no, I'm not interested. She don't care. So that's... I didn't even know you bought that. Yep. Shit. See how that works out? The barcodes were there, and we always have a good time hanging with the barcode, our buddies. Um, we'll get to the stuff we got from them in just a few moments, but sitting right across from the barcodes, they were on an end cap. And sitting right against the wall across from them was this uh, this thing that just kept drawing my attention. I were standing there talking to him, and I just had to keep looking over, looking over. It is a band called Voyager 3. And this is one of the CDs they had, New York Ninja. And what's interesting about this is this is actually a film that was done back in the 80s, but never completed, never released. Vinegar Syndrome got their hands on the rights to it, and they finished it somehow. I don't know what needed to be finished, but they finished it and hired these guys to do the soundtrack, and this is a fucking badass soundtrack. I love it. I love the soundtrack, too. Completely 80s synth, uh, synth music. Very fucking cool. Very cool. Definitely check these guys. These guys, you can listen to their stuff on Spotify. And you, I guess you can listen for free on there, because I did this morning listen to some of their other stuff. They're just great. And it is a band. It's not one guy. So, they were actually playing late on Saturday night, but we weren't sticking around for that. And the cool thing about some of the songs from this, very creep show Part 2-ish. Um, there was a few songs that screamed creep, creep show music. So, I liked it. So far, everything that I've heard from it, instrumental. <sighs> So, good good CD to listen to if you're reading a book. It's a good CD overall. There's nothing bad about it. Here, take her while I try to grab some stuff here. Don't show the world your butt. Turn around and show them your face. Show them your face. All right, those we got from the bar. Say hi, Fancy. Look. 
Look, fancy. And that we got from Brett. I'm not, do I need to pull out all of these for that you got? Even these ones that you ordered before the show? I didn't order them before the show. I ordered them to pick up at the show. They just brought it to me for breakfast. Oh, okay. <laughs> I got a puppy dog. Take him. All right. So we always, you know, we always get barcode stuff. Whenever. Yeah, she got a lot this time. I got a lot this time because, you know, with the tattoo festival and saving money for that and saving money for all the back-to-back -back shows because conventions don't like to say, you know what? They, we just, there was just a, a convention that was happening, and we want people to have money and come to our convention, and but we're going to have it where there's no savings in between shows, so, you know, they're cutting off their nose to spite their face, and I don't know what is going on with my hair, but it's making me nuts. So, I got caught up on some barcode stuff that I don't have of, <coughs> so this, uh, they struggle to get all this stuff together as quick as he could because Monster Mania that unfortunately we won't be going to is having a reunion and all <clears throat> these people that's in this stack is going to be at Monster Mania for this reunion. Let's knock into it. First and foremost. They're only noodles, Michael. They're only noodles. And yes, Kiefer's going to be there. Yeah, Kiefer fucking Sutherland at a convention. That's pretty badass. But... And then next. Let's kill the little one. The little itty bitty one. Marco Alex Winter. From the Lost Boys. I'm trying to think of a line he says. <laughs> no, I'm trying to do a good imitation. All right. What did he do to me, Star? What did he do to me? Who is it? It's, um... It's Michael. There you go. And, of course, this was the death and the death tub. After getting all messed up, all upset that these are the guys that killed Marco. Another Lost Boys. This one. <laughs> this is the best this one. This is of the, the Lost best Boys. one out of the whole whole thing for the for this. Cause he's so fucking cute. <laughs> um hold on, hold on, hold on. Three hours later. I still believe. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> I still believe I'm trying to make his belly move. <laughs> I still believe. Duh, duh, duh. You, you get the idea. Yeah. I thought you had this one. No, I do not. Oh, okay. I w this is the one that whenever I decided I'm not telling him anymore what commissions that I have in mind until I pay him. Because if not, he's going to end up doing it before I can get the commission out. Sinister! Bagul? Uh, Bagul. Hey, the Bagul's over there. Bagul? Bagul. <laughs> wait, wait, put him back. Get him. Bagul? Other Bagul. <laughs> That's an inside joke. There's only two people on here that will get that joke. Besides us. And then the commission that I had made up for this show in particular. And he had it ready for me and presented it to me for breakfast before the show. Kevin Kepi. From the Smile movie. He is credited as the bomb mon mom monster. In fact, I think one of his signatures on one was, You make this mom look good. But he's the trauma entity. How cool is that? How badass <coughs> is that? 
and we met him. He was one, as you can see. He his signature was on there. His signature was on there. Yeah, he's a cool cat, man. He's a real cool guy. He had a uh, his girlfriend did him up one year like uh, Reverend Kane from Poltergeist. Oh my God! If they they should if they ever remake part two, that's the fucking guy they need to get for it. They probably won't, but he would definitely be perfect for it. Speaking of Reverend Kane. There he is. Ain't she adorable? She is just so cute. <laughs> now this one here. I I met her 18 years ago before I knew him, and she was great. Absolutely amazing. I told her then, you just don't age. You're always just absolutely gorgeous. And she told me then, I'm going to take you home. I told her, reminded her, you know, I met you 18 years ago and you still do not age. She's like, eh, I feel it. Yeah. Barbara Crampton. 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 That, this print here is from Beyond. She was also, you may know her from Reanimator as the girl who got eaten out by a severed head. A, 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 de, a decapitated head being held by its body. And she, then, she was a little less than exciting in uh, as a guest for us. We were excited. To, I was excited to meet her, but she just didn't leave a very great <laughs> or spectacular impression, I should oh say. My goodness, that's so fucking cute. Oh my okay, God, that's so okay, cute. next, moving right along. You do want me to cook supper tonight, right? I guess not. So, the, and you guys, I think that these are still available, but they are limited. This is the new calendar for 2024. Color your own. That's the cover. And they have very interesting mashups. My favorite mashup, it looks like so far, is for December. So I'm very, 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 very excited to go to Hobby Lobby with my mom and pick out coloring devices and me and her sit down and color. What about me? If he wants to color with us, which I doubt we'll get him off the video game to color with us, but hey, but I'm hoping we all have our own personal calendar. Yes, I got one for all of us. Yep, we're all going to have them at work. Oh, shit, that means we need to buy one for the house. <gasps> shit! Alright, what else we got here? I'm not certain what this is. Oh, this was another Where purchase. the hell did that come from? This is another purchase in that little room. And this is Lisa Frank meets... Horror icon or horror horrific stuff. This is called The Legend of Sparkle the Dog. Don't say ah wow wow. And this is issue one. But Lisa Frank coloring style. I got the first issue. I need to go back to get another issue. And somewhere in here they did sign it. I don't know where. Right there. Oh. Right there and right there. Your yep. fingers are covering them. They signed inside. I didn't even see you get this one either. This was bought before he even found me after getting his own ticket. Son of a bitch. So. Oh, you bought that while you weren't supposed to be shopping. You were supposed to be waiting for me in a specified location. Uh-huh. See how it goes? Get over there with Mommy Banshee. I gotta get more stuff. This was a big, big... Did you buy this? Yes, you bought that. This was a big, 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 big... Big, big book show for... So you got one of those after all. Oh, that's the newest one. There's a shit ton of books in here. Ugh. And these are all pretty much her thing. Let me put that right there. But I am I am going to show one off 
because I was super excited to see it. <coughs> just standing there, she's looking at something, I'm just standing there waiting to move on. And I happen to look across the way and I see a picture on someone's banner, a vendor's banner. And I'm like, oh my God, what the hell is that? And it was Gary Lee Vincent. And on his banner, he had a picture of Crackoon and Crocodile. I, oh my God, we got to go see what this shit is. Because I did the Indigo Go for Crackoon. I got ordered a book because they got a book for it. I got the movie, uh, whatever they come out. And that, this guy was there. Turns out, Gary Lee Vincent is the author of these books, as well as a small acting role in several of these pictures. So I got Crocodile for free because he said, I've, I'm helping make the movies with my Indiegogo contribution, so he gave it to us for free. I am so pumped about this. I don't know why I hate these kind of movies. I don't like Mega Python versus Tyrannaconda. I don't like those. But Crocodile and Crackoon, I think it's fucking genius. So there we go with that. Everyone's a snack when a crocodile's on crack. What's not to love? I take the puppy dog back and you can go to the rest. So the other thing about that table, one of the book series that I am absolutely obsessed with is a book series called Darkened. It's six books. It took me a little while to get through all six books because I had to have a break in between. I can't just sit there and read a series book after book after book after book after book. I have to take a break. And then I, I didn't notice the name, but as soon as I walked over, I saw the dark, and I'm like, oh, my God. I got, you know, my normal excited self. Oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. And I said, I love this series. This series is so amazing. He's like, well, I'm the guy that did it. I'm like, ah! Yeah, the guy that wrote Crocodile wrote this Dark Something series. Darkened I, Hills series. Yeah. Well, the first book was called Darkened Hills. And isn't it like, if I got it right, it wasn't like Salem's Lot? It was very similar to Salem's Lot with the way that the vampires were, or the vampire was, and the master vampire, and the kid, and the preacher boy that is pretty much the blonde-haired kid in the original. It's very Salem's Lot. Yes, it kind of progressed, but since I read the book and I had the visions of who was going to play what, the kid stayed the blonde-haired kid in the original Salem's Lot. He grew up, he became a preacher, he, you know, had, you know, a kid with the, a vampire. It, it, it was awesome. The character in the book she pictured as the character from Salem's Lot. That was his visual appearance that her brain assigned to it. That's so, kind of a scary thought. So, he, I got his uh, new book, Jerome, which is a ghost story. So I got that. I'm very excited to read that. And then I got the... Uh, the book one is at work. So, but um, when we went to Motor City Legacy, I had went to this independent author called Walter Esselman. And got Horror Max. Now, you guys know I don't like zombies. I don't like zombies. Because I'm I'm just... They're overdone. And I got Horror Max and I loved it. Couldn't put it down. Loved it. Loved every second of it. Even reread it to him. And loved it even more after rereading it to him. Yep. So we saw him at Motor City Nightmares. And I told him how much I loved the original book. And I said, hey, what's going to happen to the Max? You know, what what do you got in plan? Is there going to be a sequel? <laughs> da, 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 da. And he was telling one of uh, the other customers that came over to his table. He's like, she's already read Horror Max from when we were up here in Nightmare Legacy. Or Metro City Legacy. And she's already read it twice. So I got Liberty Run 1. This is Liberty Run 2. Which, it's aliens caused the apocalypse. Zombie apocalypse. 
And then this guy, yes, his name is, author's name is Tom Sawyer. Whenever I met him last year at Motor City Nightmares, I got his book called Whiteout. About an interesting twist on the Wendigo. And we all know how I love the Wendigo. Am I not showing it right? Yeah, you can't really see it. What? Well, forget about it. Um, I don't want to cooperate, so fuck it. <laughs> um, but I love my Wendigo, and I always tend to buy books from him when I see him. I haven't even read any of the books that I got at Motor City Legacy, but yet I bought some more at Motor City Nightmares. Hopefully I didn't buy any repeats. But I got Parad From Paradise to Hell. I got in Rod We Trust again. And Rod is the same Rod from Twilight Zone. So these are Twilight Zone stories. In the first room, and this again was bought before we found each other. No wonder we didn't have any money left. You spent it all before you even walked in the fucking door. Pretty much. So Dark Siege, Connecticut Family's Nightmare by Jason McCloud. Basically, demonic possession. He had book two there as well, but I did not want to spend all the money that we had before I found you, so... What stopped you? <laughs> so, but I have this. And he signed it to me. First Saturday customer at Motor City Nightmares. <laughs> wow, that's pretty cool. As you can see, a lot of books. That's one, two, three, four. That's six books. And that'll be done probably in a month. Maybe. There's a few things in here, apparently. Well, I like my little crochet guys and my little plushie guys. My normal crochet lady went not there this time around. But they did have another crochet lady. So I've got that little guy. What the hell is it? It's a voodoo zombie rabbit with a ear piercing. Is this ear pierced? Right there. And ears pierced with a blue dot. It's a blue dot. You know what's so funny? What? I hear that blue dot. Even, I'm going to take off the blue dot, but I like the little piercing. <laughs> that probably was the color coat for to figure out what the price was. Yeah, it is. And she wants to see that. No, she does not. Yes, she does. So, we're finally, and I'm going to do an artist spotlight because I want him to get recognition. And his fucking business cards out of this world gorgeous. But this is what pulled me in, this guy here. Stephen Sholin, artist, sculptor, wickedwallmasks.com. And he does magnets, handcrafted masks, wall art, and recently started doing t-shirts. Now, if you are so artistically inclined and want to get a blank one and paint it yourself, he can has those too. But there's his card, name with his card. There's the front, and there's the back. He will, as usual, put the link in the comments below. But I bought my bestie one, gave it to her at the show, and I bought me... Check that out. That is pretty fucking cool. And he's a magnet, very strong magnet. Is it? Uh, very, very strong magnet. Good. That's but, pretty fucking wicked. He's got, like, uh, scream eyes. I don't know, but I just saw his bigger masks that eventually I will be able to afford <laughs> yeah. one of his bigger masks. But that pulled me in because he was right there. So, um, very She's nice seen guy. shiny stuff, so she so, had to go. I went in there, and so... All right. Deal with her. 
trying to see what else we got in here. I don't know if there's much more to go. Oh! Um, along with Crocodile, I was given a Cracoon poster, Crack Kills, and it is autographed by the author as well as John Russo. Who I'm not certain if John has a part in the movie or if he is just a producer. But John Russo, he is the cat that did the uh, part of the writing duties on Night of the Living Dead, the original. He has been a he's another one that is very highly regarded in the Night of the Living Dead universe. I don't know if he's anything beyond that. To be honest, in the living in George Romero's dead world, I. Uh, let me know down below. I'm not going to look it up right now. Oh. Oh. Donald England was there. One of the other artists that we follow a, a lot of. And he had some new things that I just fell in love with. And of course, Lovely Lichen purchased them for me. The first one, Deliria. Between, between the eyes. Got him. I got him right between the eyes, Allie. This is actually known as Stage Fright in the States. It's an Italian flick. It is, yes, the killer does have an owl face or an owl mask, but it's a fucking great movie. It is. The other one that she got me is, what is that? Oh, Nail Gun, <laughs> Nail Gun Massacre. They're worse headaches. Those are the worst headaches. The ones right between the eyes. <laughs> hey, it's cheaper than the chainsaw. So both of them say just between the eyes? That's wild. Yep. That these, is wild. These are great. I love these. I, it's, I mean, how often did you see a nail gun massacre fucking print? Or a stage fright? I've never seen anybody do any either one of these. I love that shit. You can have your Jason Prince. You can have your Freddy Prince. Give me this shit. Give me a crocodile uh, print. <laughs> and what was so funny, we always get each other a surprise. Well, it'll be the last purchase that I do and the last purchase that he does. And last year at Motor City Nightmares, my, my special purchase for him was also Don England, a framed The Thing. Almost done up like comic book style. Already framed. Amazing purchase. Yep. Don England's got Donald England has got a lot of great art. He does shirts, he does he has his little he's got little mystery bags, he does buttons, he does the artwork. Uh, all kinds of cool shit. He's one cool cat. And he travels, man. We see him at so many fucking shows. It's like every show we go to. He's there. He's there. So, that's all we got. See, we got more books than anything else on uh, this uh, trip. I don't really think they had a lot more vendor-wise. I mean, we had a great time. But vendor-wise, not a lot of stuff that we were really, uh, besides what we got, that we were, like, really gravitating to. There was no movies. I didn't really see any independent movies there at all, and we loved those. Um, I don't know. What'd you guys think? Any of this stuff you want? Tough shit. It's mine. Did you like the video? If you did, please hit that like button and subscribe. You can share the video. We love when you do that. We appreciate it. We love you guys. What? I'm trying to get more people to sub this subscribe to the channel oh I know what what helps get people to subscribe to the channel smash that button I've heard people say smash that button I've heard them say smash that button a lot I don't know why you need to smash it maybe it's just violent tendencies but in any case 30 minutes in god I didn't think this video was going to go that long that's all we got for you if you went to Motor City Nightmares let us know down below. We actually did. I forgot to do this, and we're going to give a shout-out to Brian Hoover and his wife. We are have met them through our Facebook... Our, shit! 
I did forget to mention that we met up with Brian Hoover and his wife. They were one of our first subscribers to the channel, and we've seen them a couple times at conventions, so it's always great to see them again. Brian is another great artist. We love our artists. We love our authors. We love our indie filmmakers. We love you to love us. Hit the like button. Subscribe. Share. Stay spooky. Stay spooky. I like it spooky. I, uh, I want to thank you. Anything you want, you, you just name it.